So as I was praying this week about freedom, you know, sometimes in our mind, the way that we envision how things are going to go, like before a big event, like for me, you know, it's been 12 years since the Lord told me that he wanted me to go into ministry. And so it's the week before and after last, last Saturday, I was just like, there's only one week, le- week left, you know, I had a countdown on my calendar, on my desk, crossing off the days. And just exp- in my mind, I'm thinking, God's just going to download to me. It's just, it's right before this, this, this amazing moment that he's destined. And, and it's, it's just going to be this week's sermon for Saturday night. It's just going to be, he's it's just going to show me so much. And then life started happening. Crazy situations going on all, all around me. Anxiety, worried of certain situations, tough conversations I got to have with people that I love, decisions that ha- I have to help make and that are, are not easy ones. And, and I just, every time I got my prayer time, I was just getting nothing. Nothing. One of the conversations happened and I was like, okay, well now we can go ahead and put that aside, God. Okay, now I'm ready. Just let your anointing flow and I'm coming and I'm getting nothing. Nothing. I mean, I'm getting, I got some scriptures. I have, I I know, I got the scriptures. Like I I had about five or six and I'm like, okay, I got that. But I'm just, for me, usually when I, he gives me the scriptures I look at them and the Holy Spirit's usually giving me stuff like pretty quickly and I'm, I'm able to get ideas and pray on that thought and pray on that and I'm getting static. I'm getting nothing. I'm getting anxiety and worry and frustrations day after day after day. And I'm literally, last night I'm here and I'm praying and I'm just like, God, what? is going on it's friday night i've got a couple ideas and my ideas aren't usually any good anyways i need something from you why if i what is going on god i've been here every night for multiple hours praying trying to focus you know i'm scattered all over the place god i need you why is this happening says, David, you have, to, you have to understand, I'm training you for where I'm taking you. And that you have to come to me every single night, every single day in prayer, whether you're getting the greatest revelations or you're hearing nothing. You got to trust me that I'm doing exactly what I need to do inside of you in those moments. So you hear static, I see beauty of your perseverance of seeking me. You're actually, your roots are going much, much deeper in the dry seasons of you're not getting all this great revelations and all this, and all, and all the, the things that normally happen. You, you kept pursuing me day after day and you would stay there for two hours just because you just wanted to be in my presence and you knew you were in my presence even though you weren't feeling anything. And I know you were confused, but you were faithful because you stayed there. So this message is for somebody, if you just haven't really been hearing anything from the Lord, if it's been a little staticky, if it's been a little confusing, if it's been a little frustrating and you're not really knowing, like, God, where are you at? I'm here. God's using me to tell you, I got you right where you need to be. You keep coming to me. And that my relationship with my children is so much more than an emotion, so much more than a revelation, so much more than w- what we're hoping and wishing we think the, si- the scenario should go. It's exactly the way God needs it to go. It's how it will go. And the flow will come when you need it. God is never late. And I was sitting here last night and it was just like, boom, it all got downloaded into me and it has nothing to do with anything I came up with it's all because our father is good 
It's all because that he loves everyone that's here tonight and that he wants to minister to everyone that's here tonight. And he has healings and breakthroughs and miracles. And what he shared with me is that he wants to demonstrate his authority tonight. He wants to demonstrate what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do right now in this moment, that he has called you, he has led you, and he wants to build you up. And he has got you exactly where you're supposed to be right now in this moment for these scriptures and this message and this time in your life to give you exactly what you need to walk out the freedom that he's called for you in your life. Lord, we just come to you right now before we share these scriptures, God. Just to thank you and how faithful and good that you are. And that if we have a relationship with you, we already have freedom. That freedom is not an emotion. It is something that you give to your children and that we want to just walk in it, Lord. And we don't, we just want to be led exactly where you're taking us, God. Lord, I just pray right now that you just remove me and just, just use this time, these scriptures. You know exactly where everyone's at, God. And we just, we just pray that you just block out all the distractions, Lord. We just pray that the Holy Spirit just speaks so clearly to people that ears will be unplugged and it will just be a straight direction of every word and every thought that will just penetrate all of our hearts, Lord. That we, we are here, God, and saying that we, our hearts are open to you. It's all, this time is all yours, Father, for us to worship you. That is what we're here for. We are here to worship you because you are the creator of the earth. You are the one that created us. You are the one that has us right here. And we are here to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm a little, a few different portions of scripture, but we're going to start off in this one. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. Whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So let's ask ourselves, is the Holy Spirit here tonight? I would have to give a big amen the Holy Spirit is in here tonight. So then that means that your freedom is here tonight. So whatever it is that you've been going through, you felt very broke down and, and wounded and tired and, and it just kept weighing you down, wearing you down, weighing you down. The Lord has put this scripture up here to say that you feel my presence, you feel my love, you feel the anointing. And that means your freedom is here. Just listen to me. Have your heart open. Let me guide you because where I'm taking you is the ultimate freedom where I'm taking you is not just here in an earthly realm I'm leading you in a spiritual realm I'm taking you to a place that you could never imagine an anointing and a love and an empowerment that I am here to give my people in this moment in this time of day in this time in the world's history I give you exactly what you need But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this, this is not a time to look at us and, 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 and I, uh, look where you're at in your life. No, God is calling you. He's, he's, he's brought you here to let you know that this, this is for you. This, is, this message is for you. His love is for you. His son died for you. He has plans for you. He's blessed. He has blessings all laid out for you. He just wants you to go and, and quit walking around with this veil that you've been walking around. You've been living your whole life. There's little holes, so I mean, I can kind of see where I'm going, but you, you don't even know what really being able to see in this world is really supposed to be because your whole life you've been living through little, little, the little glimpses of understanding that you have. You can kind of feel that things are right. You can kind of kind of see that maybe some things aren't right, but you don't really understand. You can't really see, but when the Lord calls you, you hear something in the side of your, in the side of your mind of, of the Holy Spirit right 
right now speaking to you. And as you listen and turn to that, the veil comes off and you realize what you are seeing is the cross. That is the reality of the situation. You can see like you've never seen before because the veil has been taken away. And that is my prayer here tonight. For anyone who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that God will use you. Use this message, use this time to say, child, I have so much for for you. You are only seeing part of the picture. And in your obedience to listening to the call, and as you feel right now, your heart beating faster, you feel a, a tightening in your stomach because you know that I'm speaking truth into your life. And even people like us who have relationships, some of us, most of us in here with the Lord, the devil still tries to use confusion and, 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 and block our view of where God's really taken us. I pray for clarity in your life tonight on the situations that you don't know what to do. I pray that God will, will lift the veil of, of maybe a job decision that you're supposed to make or a place you're supposed to live or a relationship to keep pursuing or to put to the side. I pray that God lifts, lifts any, any veil that the enemy has tried to put over your mind. And that when you leave here tonight, that you will be able to see with such clarity that there is no doubt that the Lord is giving you direction. Because getting a vision from the Lord of where you're supposed to go and what the Lord is wanting to do in your life is so much more important than a feeling or emotion that you will absolutely feel tonight from the Holy Spirit, which is a wonderful thing. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your love and that we feel that warmth and that glow and that heat that you share so many times when you're in an anointed service, but that fades away when the service is over. If you have a vision and the veil has been lifted, you have direction, you have purpose, you, you, have, you have a destination to where you are going. So Lord, we are here asking tonight for clarity for your children. We are here right now, right? Lord, Lord, thank you that we know you will give us clarity tonight. That right now, veils are dropping to the floor, God. That things that were confusing before the service will now make service after the service because we have gotten a word from you, God, from your word, from your spirit, because you love us and you're faithful and where your spirit is, there is freedom. Oh, you're clicking it for me. All right. No, you're good. That makes it easier for me. Um, and since this new way gives us such a confidence, we can be very bold. So when you're walking around and you got the veil on, you can't really go that quickly because you're trying to just get little by little. But if you know where you're going, you can be much more direct. You can, you, can, you can go at a, a faster pace. You can go with some, with some confidence in your step because you see what the Lord has laid out for you. But you have to be careful for if we have been, live, been called to live in freedom, brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Something for me that I struggle with in, in recovery so many times is that I would, I would start feeling and getting some freedom in my life, start having some blessings come towards me. The veil had been lifted. And when the veil gets lifted and you're in a relationship with the Lord, all of a sudden more doors are opening, more opportunities, more relationships. But then the devil comes in really quickly and he starts boosting your ego and he starts tricking you into thinking that you actually have something to do with all the doors that are opening and all the awesome things that are happening in your life. And then you just start kind of taking a little, little break from the Lord is that, oh, you know, I, I worked really hard. So instead of going to church on Saturday night, I'm going to go out and relax. You know, I deserve it. Be careful of those words if you, if, the, if, if you start thinking about all the things you deserve. I, I, have, I have relapsed so many times over the, the, the thoughts, I deserve this. I've worked really hard. I did this, I did that, I did that. Leads to a, to a dark, dark road most of the time. 
we have to, we have to understand that all, all the things that the Lord gives us in this freedom and, and the visions that now we're walking in, the doors that are open and the things that the Lord is doing for us in our life is for us to be a blessing to other people. For us to, tell the, to help point them to the Holy Spirit so their veil could be removed and they can walk in clarity and they can have healing in their life and they can have breakthrough in their life and they can actually understand the purpose of what God created them for. We have to be, th be so thankful for what God does but always be looking to give it away always wanting to give it away it's not the, it's just it's just a flowing motion god pours into us we pour out to others god pours into us we pour out to others and it just keeps flowing it never ends Amen. it keeps going and going and going don't use the blessings god has for you and start trying to bless yourself with it it's self sabotage You think it's for you, but really it's a trap the devil's putting on you. You're, re you're relaxing time and getting disconnected and isolating yourself and just watching some Netflix for, for a couple days is just a slow pull away where you're not as connected. It's a slow fade that the devil does in most Christians' life. It's not an instantaneous thing. I didn't wake up one day and want to smoke heroin. I, I wanted to try a beer. Then I wanted to smoke a bowl. And then it goes on and on and on and on and on. He, the devil doesn't just get you all the way at suicide's door. He leads you there slowly day after day after day after day after day. That's why we have to stay day after day after day after day connected in the spirit with the Lord, being led. If you're being led by some sort of spirit, which one is it? Is it the Holy Spirit or is it another kind of spirit? And if it's not the Holy Spirit, I'm here to tell you, it's another kind of spirit. And it doesn't have its good intentions for you. Jesus said to my people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. A lot of people say they believe in Jesus. They say all the right things. They know the songs. They can quote the scriptures, but they're not living out the scriptures and the and there is if the key word that stuck out that God showed me in that is if you're truly my disciples if you don't you can say you're a disciple and you can do all that but if you are not being faithful in the teachings well how do I know the teachings you're reading your Bible to learn the teachings you're praying to hear from the Lord to get the wisdom of his direction for you and if you are not doing that on a consistent basis, you will go astray and that you are not the disciple that God is talking about in this scripture. And you will not truly be walking in your freedom because you're not living in truth. You don't know the truth because you're not in the word daily. And everything you hear that's not from the, from the word and it's coming from the world is meant to take you away from the truth. It's manipulative. It's smoke and mirrors. It's deception to get you off any sort of straight line that the Lord has you on and if you're coming in the only truth you're getting is the scriptures I quote to you every Saturday night you are going to be off track by Wednesday night the devil has no problem with you coming to church once a week for an hour and a half but once you start getting in a relationship and start developing where you're, you have your own prayer time, your own, your own connection with the Lord, then that's when he really starts getting worried. He's got millions upon millions of people fooled in that they have a relationship with God because they come to church once a week and they work in the cafe. 
That, that, that's, not, that, that's not what, that, God's not asking you that when you get up to, to the throne. He's not going to say, well, uh, did you go to church? Yes, I went to church once a week. Okay, well, where did you volunteer at? Oh, I worked in the cafe once a week too. Well, it, that's it? That's it. Well, that's not what I'm really looking for. I was there every week. I, I know you were there every week. And that's one day, one hour out of the 24 hours and the other seven days of the week. So that means that you're giving me about literally 2% of your life. And you're going to tell God that, yes, you're the most important person to me and that you're the Lord of my life. And I, I do everything for you. But you give him 2% of your time. That's where the Lord, I mean, I, I know the Lord has had me share this multiple times. It's because God is trying to wake people up in the church and that you have to start really getting connected and you have to actually be living out the teachings because you have a false sense of freedom. We, we, we've, I've, I said this the other week, we've, we've been confused and tricked that comfort is freedom. The devil makes very comfortable prisons. Netflix, Hulu, DoorDash, all of them. Amazon. I'm blessed. No, you lazy. You're not walking in freedom. You're not, it, it, you're not walking in everything God has for you. And I, and, and I want to bring people to Christ through the Holy Spirit and tell people about Jesus. And then after we get you connected in a relationship, what God has put on my heart, Pastor Kim's heart, Lala's heart, and a lot of other leaders in this church's heart is that we d use the Holy Spirit to develop you to walk out in your destiny. Not to barely get into heaven, like, like Kim was talking about, about, oh yes, I got in. Yes, we obviously want everyone to go to heaven obviously but there is so much more that we're not tapping into because we're not following the teachings not listening and being guided in every way in our life i have never met someone that said i spent too much time with the lord yesterday never ever have i heard that Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. I want to tell you, whatever you've been str struggling with in your life, you have power over it if you have the Holy Spirit in you. That it does not dictate you anymore. And any addiction that the devil is lying to you and saying that it has power over you, it, I'm rebuking that in Jesus' name. Every generational curse, any addiction, every, anything that you're struggling with in your life, right now the Holy Spirit wants you to know that if you tap into me, if you listen to me, and you continually come to me, even when you don't feel like it, but day in, day out, you're on your knees, you're spending time, you're listening and guiding and allowing me to guide you, I will lead you to freedom where you no longer have issues with that anymore. People can change their behavior on their own. They can, people, a lot of times in my life, I would change, I would change, I would stop drinking. I would be white knuckling it and, and would be able to get through it for a little bit of time. And people can modify their behavior on their own. But the Holy Spirit takes away the desire to do the thing anymore. That is, how do I know God's real? Because the desire to drink, the desire to watch pornography, the desire to steal, the desire to lie was literally removed from my heart and my spirit. I no longer desire those things. And when the thoughts or someone presents those things that would used to have me salivating at the mouth wanting to participate, disgust me. And, 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 and I, if I get around people, not in a judgmental way, but I start feeling very uncomfortable. I cannot hang around people taking a bunch of shots and just kick it like I used to. And just stand there and joke around with them. And I'm not, they might not be alcoholics. That might be the one time they're drinking all year long because it's their birthday. I'm not condemning somebody for doing that. But for me, it makes me sick. Because I know that God brought me out of that. That's not who I am anymore. And he put that in me to protect me. To protect me. You should feel 
uncomfortable with sin. You, it, and if you don't, you need to start praying for God to tenderize your heart. Because every time you go into sin over and over, the same thing over and over, over and over, you're callousing your heart. It's getting rougher. It's getting tougher in certain areas. If you're not married and you're sleeping with your boyfriend and girlfriend, you should be convicted about that at night. You should be. If you're not, you need to start praying to the Lord and asking f to tenderize your heart. I'm not saying that you don't have a relationship with God and he doesn't love you and you don't love him. But I'm telling you, you're never going to walk fully in what God has for you. And that's what I want to do as a pastor of this church. Is have you fully walk in what God has for your life until you are not living willingly in sin. Not making mistakes and tripping up from time to time. We all do that. I do it regularly. But I am not willfully engaging in a certain activity that I know goes against the teachings of his word. Those are two totally different things. When you are willfully knowing it's wrong and know that you should not be doing it, but it does not bother you and you continue to walk in it day in, day out, day in, day out, that's a dangerous place to be. And the Holy Spirit will give you the power to be victorious in that situation, to break you free and tenderize your heart and you might struggle with it for a period of time, maybe for years, but you will be disturbed by it. You won't be willingly walking through it, doing it without any repent, without any remorse. God is not asking for us to be perfect, but he is wanting us to be faithful in the teachings, be faithful in what, giving it your honest best chance, being obedient and listening. We have to do that. So God can fill you up with all the things that he has for you. God's ways is the best way. Whatever his plan is for your life and the route to go and get there is the absolute best way because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He sees a way bigger perspective. He knows so much more. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He created us. That's why we have to be in constant communication and wanting to hear from the spirit and being more in clarity so we can tap into that power. How do you, I wanna ask you this for you to ask yourself, how do you go home and, or, or in your private time, tap into the Holy Spirit? What do you do? Do you listen to music? Do you read a scripture? Do you pray? What is it? And if you don't know, that's okay. That's why we give this time at the end of our services where we just let the anointing flow and we let the Holy Spirit work so you kind of realize what it is, how the Spirit speaks to you. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to everybody differently. Some of us, it's really music is really where you're hearing from the Lord. Lala, that's Lala, the music is speaking to her. That's how the, she, she connects with the Holy Spirit. Me, it, reading my Bible is really I, where he speaks to me. He'll open stuff up for me. Sometimes it's prayer for people. Whatever it is, you need to find what your thing is. It's not about my thing. It's not about Kim's thing. It's not about Lala's thing. We can give you, we can talk about what God's doing in our life and, and some suggestions of how, but God, God knows exactly how to connect with you and build you up in the way that you need. I encourage you to keep tapping into the power. We need to tap, as the body of Christ, we need to fully tap in to the power of God and what he is wanting to do. Because there are demonic, demonic moves that are, are, are coming at very powerfully in every direction in society. And God doesn't just sit back and let the devil run rampant all around without lifting up spiritual warriors and pouring out his power to say, checkmate, I still run the game. <laughs> 
tap into the power. We all have the same power. It's the Holy Spirit. Some of us are just doing it more than others. My, my anointing and my Holy Spirit is not more powerful than yours. It's the exact same one. Find how you connect to the Holy Spirit. For the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good, not disaster. To give you a future and a hope in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, you will find me. God has a plan for your life, whether you've been following him for 50 years or this is, you've been following him for the last 50 minutes of this service. Plan for you. Plans to give you hope. It's a good plan. It's the perfect plan. It's, it, it's a destiny is what it is. And you might be in a place that it seems like it, or maybe actually is a disaster of a life of a situation that you're in. That you're in an absolute disaster in a relationship or in a job or anywhere else in your life. It's an absolute disaster. Well, I'm here to tell you, that's not where God's taking you. That's the, he's taking you out of there. He's walking you through it. He's lifting you higher to go above it, to go and take it and use it as a testimony. A disaster is not your destination. The key is that you are in a disaster sometimes and then we stop listening and we get so focused on the disaster, we start thinking it's our identity is, well, I'm just, uh, this is the life I have. No, God is saying, look up to the Lord. Look up, quit looking at the disaster. Look to me, listen to me and I I will lead you but you have to pray you have to pray and he will listen God is coming right now to tell you I've heard your prayers you are not left alone I have not abandoned you I have heard every word I have seen every tear and I am listening to you and if you continue to come to me wholeheartedly wholeheartedly then I will answer you and you will find me which will get you out of the disaster the Lord will lead you out of the temptations and the rough time and the depression and the anxiety and the worry and whatever it is you're going through he will get you out of it if you're looking for him wholeheartedly these prayers of where they're just so robotic and they're just going through the motions those prayers are not the ones he's answering Because you're not, really can, you're not really giving all you have to the Lord. When you are praying, you know the prayers that get answered every time? Desperate prayer. Prayer when you're giving all you have and you're weeping and you're saying, God, there's no other option but you. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know how to handle this situation. But I know you do. And I'm laying everything I have out at your feet right now. Those are the prayers that get answers. Those are the ones that God hears. Those are the ones when he lifts you up. Those are the times he supernaturally comes down and touches you and gives you a blessing that you could never imagine because you're wholeheartedly seeking him. When is the last time you cried out to the Lord on your knees? Wept at his goodness wept for someone in your life that you know is seriously struggling and know that God is the only one that can heal them. Are you weeping for your family? Are you weeping for your children? Are you weeping for yourself, for a deeper relationship for God? Or are you just saying, God, please guide my life today. I hope I have a good day. And I hope I get a raise, amen. That's how I prayed most of my life, man. Giving God a checklist. This is what I need, thanks. Not waiting for a response, not listening. And you wonder how come you ain't seeing God work in your life. 
You hear about all these amazing stories in the Bible of fire coming from heaven, people being raised from the dead, casting out demons, and you're looking at your life, and it just looks like nothing in the Bible. It's because we, we have been fooled by the devil of this checklist of what a Christian is. Go to church, don't swear, don't watch rated R movies, try not to get drunk too much, and uh, you know, all these things that makes you a good person. And you're checking all the boxes, and you're not seeing, and, you're, and then you come to services like this, and you feel the power of God, you see the power of God, you see the Holy Spirit move, you see people getting, for, getting free right in front of you, and you're wondering how come nothing's really happened. You get in an emotion when you're here on a Saturday night, but when you go home, it wears off, and it's kind of, just kind of the same thing, the same mundane living, the same mundane relationship with the Lord. It's because he's telling you, you're not wholeheartedly searching for me. We have off days, so do I. But I get back up and I don't feel right if I don't spend time with God. That is where I have, God has led me. That's the way we're all supposed to live our life. We have to get this selfishness and this pride and thinking that we know what's best. And then when we have a problem, then we come to the Lord. We gotta change our mind. We gotta get a, a renewing of the mind in the American church of what, what God has a Christian, what a Christian's really supposed to be. What does the church really look like? What is the church really supposed to do? The church is supposed to be so much more than one meeting inside of a building. It's somewhere where we live, that we impact our communities. Every, do, does everyone at your work know that you're a Christian? I heard a lot of yeses, that's good. We need to continue. The moves of God that are coming are ones that yes, they happen in a building, but 85% of them are gonna be out of a building. And he's gonna use the people who are bold enough to go and be led and pray in the supermarket, who are gonna be led and, and, and at the park praying for people or whatever it is, whatever God is leading you to. But if you're not praying wholeheartedly, you're never gonna be able to participate. And I want you to participate. It's fun being nuts for Jesus, man. I walk in such a different kind of life now. Not a perfect life, but I'm saying when I just give everything I have to the Lord and I fall sometimes, but I just get back up and I keep going. And that God is looking and he is raising up more and more people like that. He's raising them up. And if, if, if you just are just reckless for your wanting to connect with the Lord, he's gonna start using you in such powerful ways. There's gonna be so many, so many ministries that are gonna come out of this ministry from people that are gonna be raised up and you're gonna start your own groups. You're gonna be discipling your own people. You're gonna be preaching yourself. You're gonna be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be building churches. What God is doing right now is just the beginning of this billion soul harvest that is coming and he's raising up. He's raising up people right now and there's gonna be so many of us 10 years from now when we come back together, we'll have a Gen Next reunion and we'll be just talking about all the awesome things God has done. Because we decided on Saturday nights, we're gonna search for God wholeheartedly. We're, that's what we're doing. I don't know what they're doing at these other churches, but on Saturday night, when we come to worship the Lord, we're worshiping with everything we got. We're, we're wholeheartedly right now. Are we, are we, did we find the Holy Spirit yet? Do you feel the anointing yet? Do you feel the fire yet? Do you feel the demonstration of what God is wanting to do in your life yet? Because his words are true. We're active, we're acting out these scriptures. And as you act out a scripture, as you walk out the scripture, it, it manifests in front of you. It has to. 
It's the word of God. There's hope for you tonight. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The, the highway to hell is broad. Its gate is wide. For many, choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow. And the road is difficult. And only few ever find it. Lord, thank you that we are the few. Are you the few? I mean, that's a personal question. It, it doesn't, it, it, I'm afraid there's, there's very few in the church that are actually on the narrow road. Especially in America. Not in China. Because they're, they're literally risking their lives to go to church. They're all in. In America, it's starting to, persecution's coming now. So we're getting to the point where it's actually going to cost you to say that you follow Jesus. Back in the 90s, everyone, went to, everyone was a Christian. When I was growing up, no one, I mean, not everybody went to church, but they identified as a Christian and it didn't really, you know, that's just what you did. You went to church or whatever. But that is not how it is anymore. We, we, you can see that the, we are no longer the majority of how society is working. And entering God's kingdom, right? The, the only way to go to heaven is the narrow gate. The narrow gate is Jesus. Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's the only way. Road to hell, there's a million roads to hell. Not one out that thing though, but there's a million to get to it. The gate's wide, many choose that way, but the gateway to life is very narrow and difficult. Being a Christian sold out for Jesus, living out the teachings, being faithful and, and living out the, the life God has for you is not easy. And the deeper you get into it and the more connected you get with Lord, the more adversity you have. These last couple of weeks before, for me have been extremely difficult. It's because I'm on the verge of breaking through a promise that God gave me 12 years ago. The devil doesn't just sit back and let you have victory. You have victory, but you have to persevere. You have to push through. You have to listen to where God's taking you. If I didn't act the way that the Lord was wanting me to act in certain situations this week, it would have been a bad week for me. I didn't react the best but I was less of an idiot than the way I used to be. Sometimes you just gotta be happy with the growth you've made. I'm still working on some things in some areas in my life, but you know what? I, I know when I got up and left the meeting that I was in, I knew I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said it quite like that. But then, you know, God's, God's got a sense of humor. He, and he, he'd tell me, well, David, well, at least you didn't do this. And he'd give me a, a flashback of other things I had done in my life when conversations didn't go my way. And I said, exactly him. This is how I pray sometimes. I'm just bluntly honest. I said, yeah, I wasn't as big as an idiot as I used to be. And we both kind of laughed about it. I said, no, David, you're not as big as an idiot as you used to be. You're doing good, David. You just keep going. You, you know you got the, we got to keep working on that, David. That's how God talks to his children when you're talking to him. He saw my heart. And he knew I was trying. I, I didn't say everything I wanted to say. I'm a very emotional person, so some of it just kind of comes out sometimes. But he knew I, I was giving it my best in those conversations. Was it handled perfectly like a pastor should? No, it wasn't. But what, what he started in me, he will finish. And I'm, I'm in a process of the Lord working in my heart and in my life. And I will continue to grow in that. And it's not easy. 
And that, I mean, those last few words, man, only a few ever find it. That is terrifying. How many people that I know that I, I, I see and that go to church and are they really wholeheartedly seeking the Lord? Are they really on the narrow path? That's why I, th- I feel like God is, 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 is we all got to ask ourselves this question. Are we, are we, are we making sure that we are, are following the narrow path exactly as God's directing? Because it's extremely, extremely important. And that's not something you want to figure out when it's too late. And anybody who ever comes in to any church service that I would be honored enough to lead or be a part of or anything like that, I, I will make sure that the full gospel is always preached as the Holy Spirit leads. Not to sugarcoat something, not something just to make them feel good about certain situations and hold, don't talk about that topic that makes people feel uncomfortable. I would rather them feel uncomfortable and maybe not like me personally, but go to heaven and have a real relationship with the Lord than have them be my best friend, but I'm manipulating the teachings because I want them to keep coming back. I will never do that. I want, God wants God. God is, is 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 wants us to just be straight and and with 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 everyone we co- come in contact with, and it's very important to let people know the truth of that. Following Jesus is not easy, but it's worth it. It's so worth it because we have to come to a place where my old self is crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So if someone tells you, ooh, that's not the right verse, Um, 26... It's the verse that says, follow, carry, your, carry your cross and follow me. I believe it's 26, 24. The verse is talking about how we, we have to carry our cross daily for the Lord. That's the scripture. The Bible calls us to be crucified to our, to our old self and to carry our cross daily. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. I probably wrote that down wrong, Deb. Good job, Debbie. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone you want to be my followers, you must give up your own way and take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? So God showed me something last night as I was praying about what happens so many times in our life for people who come to the Lord. They come in and they have the veil on, right? Like we were talking about. They have the veil on and they're here and they hear God. The, the gospel is being preached and the altar call is open and they know what they've heard is true. That Jesus is real, that he really died. And you come up 
to the altar and you get on your knees and you cry out and you say, God, I believe in you. I, 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 I love you. Thank you for sending your son. And as you say that prayer, the veil is taken off. You see the cross and you have an emotional experience and you're crying and God touches you like you've never been touched before. And in that moment, you know that God is real. And then the service ends. And you go and you know something happened. And you know that that, that that was something that you never experienced before. And you were looking forward to the next week. But you have a rough week. And you've had a long day at work. And someone was talking bad about you. Your boss yelled at you. And, and you found out that, that you got to get a schedule change. And all everything is just going against you. And you're on your way home. And you're driving by the liquor store. I'm just, this is an old personal story of what the devil has done to me in my life. Um, you're driving by the liquor store. So then you think, I had a real rough day. This really sucks. I just need a couple drinks. You go into the liquor store, you get the liquor, you go home, you start taking shot, you start thinking about how your boss did you dirty and how those people were saying that and then you're just slamming them down, slamming them down and then you're angry and then you're lonely and then all of a sudden you go to the computer and you start watching porn and the devil's got you back up in a veil and you realize that God was, you had this encounter with God but now you can't really see again because now you're all stuck up in the sin and you feel guilty about taking the shots and watching the pornography and you go to work and you're still frustrated at your boss and you can't let go of the anger of everything that has happened and you go and you have uh, more shots after that next day at work and you watch more porn but then you still, you remember what happened so you come back to church and you come and you hear the message preached and you know that God's there and you come up to the altar and you cry and he opens your eyes again he says I forgive you and you start believing in God again and you feel this thing and you feel like God is working and then you go up and you go out and the service is over and then all of a sudden you have a rough day again and you haven't gotten in your Bible you haven't prayed and all of a sudden you're just going in this evil rotation of you go to church you get a breakthrough you go back out and do the same thing you come to church you get a breakthrough get clarity go back out and do the same thing because what God is really calling you to do is when you're here and the veil has been removed you come up and instead of just coming to the cross we all want to come to the cross get our get our sins forgiven and be changed but really what we're supposed to do is come to the cross and then come up and get on it and be crucified with God and say that I oh God whatever's not of you kill it I don't want any more of it take the desire away take the alcohol away take the lust away kill it God kill all of my old me and you realize that the old you is dead and what you do when you leave is you pick up the cross and you say this isn't going to be easy but I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk the narrow path. I'm going to stay and listen to what the Lord is saying. And I'm going to carry my cross. And it might get a little heavy. It might get a little difficult. And I might not know how I'm going to make it. But in those times, I set it down. I pray. And all of a sudden then, I got supernatural strength to lift my cross up. And know that there is nothing that God can't do when I walk the narrow path. And I crucify myself. My cross daily, walking the path in constant contact with the Lord. That is how God wants to set you free tonight. He wants you to get on the cross. Quit coming to it. Crucify your old self. Let him kill the old man and let him rise you up in freedom and let you know that he loves you. He destined you to be here and he has your healing here tonight.